This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games at discounted prices, and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello, my friends. It's the Game Boy Geek here. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. With everyone being home and social distancing and uh, wearing masks everywhere they go and such, uh, over the last few weeks I've been doing a lot of streaming. If you've missed any of these, you can go back and watch those any times. We've been streaming games that you've been able to play along with us, like On Tour. Uh, last week we uh, we did one with Bruno Cathala where the audience actually got to vote in real time and play against him. And uh, we've been doing some roll and rights and such like that. We did Ripple Rush from Stronghold Games, another one that you could just play. And a lot of those, like the Ripple Rush and the On Tour, you can actually go back and play after the fact on demand because those are the types of games where you can literally print out a sheet and still play even though it's not live. And last week we did Cartographers, which is my favorite flip and write. Tonight we have something a little different for you. We have a special treat because we're going to get a sneak peek at some upcoming 2020 games because obviously with conventions not really happening up until now and who knows for how long, it's a little bit harder for publishers to get out there and show people what's going on and what's coming out and get you all excited. There's, I mean, we can't go around to exhibit halls right now and show you. The last one we went to was at Gamma, which is where I saw some of the things we're going to be talking about tonight and I was really excited about seeing those. And so we are going to allow Bezier Games to come on and tell you about it. So let me introduce you my guest tonight. Tonight I have Matt Ryan from Bezier Games. He is the trade show manager for Bezier Games. Matt, how's it going? Great, Dan. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. It's always great to see you. So trade show manager, what's your life been lately with all this craziness? I mean, obviously you're not packing up and drive. Usually you drive around at conventions and do all that sort of thing, right? Yeah, I usually I'm loading up the truck by this time and already hitting the road and going to see everybody and show off our cool stuff that's coming out. Um, but a lot's changed, obviously. So I spent the first part of the year, obviously, putting together the plans for the convention. So I spent the last couple of months unplanning. Um, but the really neat thing is there are conventions like Origins who are going to have an online convention. So essentially it changes my job a little bit, where I'm now going to have to manage and learn how to be eye-catching in an online market in a different venue. Have you, so you're involved with the Origins thing, Have you, you're probably behind the scenes seeing how it's actually going to work. Everyone's been really curious as to how that's actually going to work. And it sounds like they're going to have like a virtual exhibit hall and people doing demos. Uh, so you've been involved with some of that stuff behind the scenes? Yeah, so I've been, uh, Gamma's been a really, really good communication with everybody and letting them know what's going on. And they have a really solid plan put together. I'm really excited to see how it rolls out because if it goes as well as it sounds like it will, I think everybody's going to really, really enjoy it and it'll be worth the price of admission. Oh, that's good. And I heard the price of admission is supposed to be whatever you want to donate, right? At least for the, from the people for badges, like people like us that want to attend. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% on that yet. You'd have to go to Gamma for details, but... I heard something along those same lines. Cool. Well, tonight we're here to talk about some of your upcoming 2020 releases and do a little Q&A. So by the way, folks, if you are watching this and you want to ask questions, you can go ahead and do that in the chat room. And uh, what will happen is towards the end, we'll go back and I'll go through and read some of those to Matt and he'll be able to answer those. So if you have any questions about these games or even just general stuff about Bezier games or future things or any other questions format, just go ahead and put them in the chat. We can look at those and have them answer those at the end. So Matt, uh, we've got three games to talk about tonight for 2020. Um, mm -hmm. Why don't you introduce the first one and then we have a little video to show them on this. Absolutely. So our first one is going to be the third game in our Silver series. It's called Silver Coin. So we have Silver Amulet, Silver Bullet, and now Silver Coin added to the equation, um, which adds a whole new dynamic and a whole new mechanic to kind of keep it really exciting and fun. And it mixes and matches really, really well with the other two decks. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play a video that will give you a quick two-minute idea of what this game's all about. Silver Coin is a fast and engaging traditional card game with a werewolf twist. Your village has been overrun by savage werewolves which are represented by the numbers on each of the cards that make up your village. You're trying to have the least amount of those werewolves in your village at the end of each round and you'll do so by exchanging cards in your village with new ones that attract less werewolves and by gathering and removing sets of identical cards. But it's not as easy as it seems because the residents in your village start face down and you only get to see two of your five cards at the beginning of the round. So you'll be exploring and learning about your village as the game goes on and utilizing the special abilities of your residents to help you. When you think you have the fewest werewolves in your entire village, you'll call for a vote. 
But be careful because everyone else gets one more turn to try to save their village first. And if you succeed, you'll get the powerful secret weapon, the silver coin to use in the next round, giving you the opportunity to take away an opponent's face-up ability. Or to reveal the face-up ability of your own. The box contains an amazing game trays insert that organizes the cards and has a pocket for the silver coin and score pad. Silver and Silver Bullet were released in fall of 2019, and all silver games can be played on their own or combined with other silver games. The fun of this game is in the exploration and improving of your own village by puzzling together the different resident abilities, like discarding the Nostro instead of keeping it, which gives you all the information of an opponent's entire village. Or doing the same with the Golem, which allows you to help your own village by lowering your werewolf count or by hurting an opponent by increasing their werewolf count. Silver also creates a lot of tension and excitement at the end of the round when players' villages are revealed, like when using the adorable Regifter's ability, which gives one of your cards to an opponent. This could be the Wolfman, causing someone who thought they were going to score a perfect round of zero due to the Wolfman's ability of scoring zero if you have 13 werewolves or less at the end of the round, instead causing them to have a high score since now they have multiple Wolfmen. The game feels different at each player count of 2, 3, and 4, and it has a classic card game feel inspired by games like Cabo and Golf, but has deeper strategy due to the number of abilities. However, Silver Coin is still simple to learn and easy to play. Yeah, I think I've heard that guy somewhere before myself. I know, I appreciate it. I had a two minute break. I could uh, go get a drink of water, hang out, it was great. Yeah, so Silver is one of those titles that we're going to continue to support. So it's one that we really, really enjoy, and we've seen like a huge backing for it. So there will be more coming out in the series. Um, so that's huge. The other thing is there's a free app you can download. So you can download an app and play just the Amulet Edition um, against the computer. Uh, and the availability for Silver C is very unique. Um, so we've introduced this new thing called our Wolfpack program. And so if you're a member of the Wolfpack program, um, you can go to our site and pre-order Silver um, Coin, and it will actually be shipping very shortly. We've had some people who joined the Wolfpack and pre-ordered it, and it's actually already shipped from our warehouse. Um, so it's not actually going to be available till June 2020. But if you are eager to get it, you can try joining the Wolfpack. Um, the Wolfpack actually offers a lot of cool things. It offers you that 10% discount on everything, uh, free US shipping, uh, preferred pre-sale processing, and monthly specials. And um, the other two titles we're going to talk about tonight are also going to be available for pre-order on our site. So joining the Wolfpack could be a very good, uh, good move for, uh, for some of your fans. So tell me more about the app, because I, I did not know about this. Um, the app, yeah, so the app's really neat. It's, uh, it's just a one-on-one -on -one against the computer. And so it's just the A deck right now. Um, we're working and play testing the B deck. And so as we're working and play testing the B deck, it's going to be really, really cool because eventually we're going to be able to integrate that into the same application. Cool, cool. Yeah, I, I didn't know that you could play that against the computer. That's really cool. So yeah. now the Wolfpack program, that is something new as well. Um, when did this when did this launch? It must have been pretty recently, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so well, somebody just told me they may be having a little trouble hearing you, Dan. Yeah, I think I, there was something going on with the audio. I think it's back on now. OK, cool. Perfect. Just making sure. Um, but yeah, so the Wolfpack program it's, uh, it's really, really unique because we wanted to have a way to reward our fans because we have people who are so diehard werewolf fans and diehard Bezier fans that really, really enjoy um, our things. And we appreciate that. And we thought this was a great way to show our appreciation back to our fans. 
Yeah, so one of the cool things about this was, uh, sorry, it sounded like something happened to my audio and it got cut off for a little bit after that video. I apologize for that. I was just basically messing and, and messing around with Matt saying I did his job for him tonight. Now he can, he, you know, he got to hang out and have fun. So sorry about that. It seems like it's back working now. And uh, so, yeah, about the Wolf Pack, the cool thing I thought about this is that, like, A, it's free shipping, B, you get, like, you know, priority uh, and things like that. But it's also, it's only like $5 a year, which is, which you'd spend more than that on shipping anyway. So it sounds like it's like kind of a no brainer. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's essentially, if you order a title, um, I mean, your shipping would be probably around $5. So it's might as well join, you know, um, you get all the good information and I'll tell you the monthly specials are kind of unique. They're going to be really big discounts on bundles and packages. So if you have things that you like, it might be a great time to upgrade some components. Uh, it might be a great time to pick up a, an expansion that you don't own yet. Um, so just keep your eyes on it. It's uh, it's really, really neat. And you actually are going to get a, a medallion coin for joining. Uh, that's what that unique little symbol is. So, Is it like it's like a little, a literally like a metal coin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be a medallion. Oh, that is cool. That's really cool. All right. Well, that's cool. It's about the wolf pack. I have. I see people in the chat room saying that oh, they wait. had not. We uh, may not have uh, done the medallion. Sorry, I'm looking oh. at my sheet. We are <laughs> we are talking about doing a medallion. It's okay. on the uh, other list. Sorry. No worries. So about silver. Back to silver. Now we've talked a little bit about the wolf pack program. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to mention about silver and the silver universe? Um, so the silver universe, um, it, like I said, it's going to continue to grow. Uh, but the, some people are pretty apprehensive about mixing and matching stuff. And one of the things I always tell people is just do half and half. Take the odds from one box and the evens from another um, and put them together and you're going to have a pretty good experience and with minimal having to mess with and manipulate your cards. Um, the other neat little Easter egg in this game is if you see the picture up here, <laughs> the regifter is actually a... Uh, and I know that you've gotten to meet Athena, Dan, but it's actually Ted's dog, Athena, drawn as a puppy, which I thought was really adorable. Like, how much cuter can you get? Yeah, no, it, that the regifter is amazing. And the regifter is actually my favorite card in that deck. <laughs> yeah, it's a great one, especially if you can uh, get a fairy with it right at the end and turn it face up right in that last turn. Oh, nothing feels better. Yeah. So uh, we have some people in the chat room asking about a link for the Wolfpack program. As, as far as I can see, as soon as you go to BezierGames.com, it's like right up there on the homepage right now. You just click there, right? Yep, it'll be the headline thing. It'll be up at the top of the page. Um, we just started it. Uh, we already are almost into triple digits for members, but we started it Monday. So um, it's going great for us. We're really, really excited that people are wanting to see what's coming out and excited to get these pre-orders. Um, because like I said, Silver, you guys have already seen A and B from, so you kind of have an idea of it. The other two things we're showing tonight are very, very unique. Yeah, and so before we leave Silver, I just want to say that the, I do love the mixing and matching. I love that you can take some of the roles you love from some and some of the roles you love from others, and each of them have like their own sort of feel to them, and so you can kind of mix and match and make things the way to cater to your, your game group, you know. So like the Blob and the Regifter are my favorite from this set for sure, but if I want to play one of the other sets, like the Bullet set that's like, like has a lot of take that in there, but I want to play some of this other stuff. It's really cool that you can mix it up match. And I also like that this game's kind of sort of evolved from the very classic game that I used to play as a kid with just basic playing cards, golf, you know, and then that mm -hmm. moved into Cabo, and then this has turned into like a complete gamer's game from Ted. So I just like, I love it when, when, when games come, come from like an old pedigree of things that I realized as a kid. And then they to see what it's been done with it is really cool. Yeah, because I like, I've always been a big card game fan. I mean, I like playing Euchre, I like playing Rummy. I mean, you give me a good card, good solid card game, and I'm I'm a happy guy. So um, that's why I really enjoy Silver is because it has that, like, sit around with your family and play cards feel, but it's just a gamer version. Yep, that's cool. So what else do you have tonight that you want to talk about? You, you, you kind of just teased there's some things that haven't had a lot of information out there yet. Yeah, so they just also went up for pre-order on our website as well. But the next one we'll talk about is our planned Gen Con release, um, which if Gen Con doesn't happen and they go digital, it'll be a digital Gen Con release. Um, but it's called Whistle Mountain. Now, Whistle Mountain is by Luke Laurie and Scott Caputo. So Scott Caputo was our designer for Whistle Stop. And so this is a cousin. It's not an expansion. It's a standalone, completely different game. 
but um, Scott Caputo had a very heavy hand in it. So you'll see a lot of that whistle stop influence there. And so whistle stop was a game that I loved uh, and it's, I still love it, but it's one of those ones that that was a, uh, it was, uh, it was pick up and deliver, it had stocks, uh, it had route building, had all that sort of stuff. Tell us how this is different from that. Okay. So this is completely different from that. It's really, really different. Um, so it is actually an engine building um, tile placement game. So it's really, really unique where you're going to be building machines and scaffolding in a valley um, and trying to collect some resources and get your workers um, out of the valley before it floods. And so there's a lot of neat stuff going on on the board and a lot of cool opportunities. And the components for this game are really, really unique. Um, as you can see, yeah, they're those little, shoo, I got one here, and you got a great picture of them there. But they're airships you're going to be using. Um, they're airships that you're going to be using to go into this valley and collect resources. I think it's a really unique theme. Um, and the other neat thing is all, you, all your, um, every one of your blimps is a different size. So one's a one by three, one by two, and a one by one. So you can strategically maneuver them into these scaffoldings to collect the resources you need. Oh, wow. So would you say, is this game about the same weight as Whistle Stop, or is it heavier, is it lighter? What about the, the, the play time and the player counts? I would say that, um, so the player counts, this one is only two to four. This one does not have a fifth player as Whistle Stop does. But um, with this one, it is, I would say it's a little heavier. It's a little, have, has a little more gamer mechanics to it. Um, but I would say as far as jumping into it, um, it feels like, I don't know, it feels like after you, the first time you play Whistle Stop, it almost feels like you're learning what's going on. I feel like this is the same way. That first game you're going to, you'll probably get beat if you're playing with somebody who's played before, but you'll be really eager to play that next game because you'll figure it out and you're like, oh, I got a better strategy this time. I know what I'm going to do. Um, I'd say the closest thing that it has going for it that Whistle Stop is there's so many unique ways to win. And you've played enough Whistle Stop to know there are so many different strategies. Like you can never, you can never play the same strategy twice. Um, and this has that same feeling where no matter how many times you play, you don't have to repeat the same strategy to win. There's not one set path that you have to take to win. Oh, that's cool to hear because, yeah, in Whistle Stop, it's one of those things where whatever tiles come out that game, whatever combination of tiles and whatever, like, crazy combo that you can look at as the tiles come out and come up and exploit those before others can you're going to win right and so does this have that sort of style of it as well well yeah so um obviously in whistle stock you know you get the, the stock pieces out and you collect the stock faster and you're going to have a little bit of an advantage um this one if you're the person building the machine you're going to have a little bit of an advantage just because you're the one activating more things on the board um, and that advantage is being able to manipulate and move some of your workers around um, the art's really fun on it, too. It was one that we took a lot of time coming with the art, but it's vibrant colors. It really stands out on a table. Um, I had so many people at Gamma stop and be like, tell me about this. Like, this looks cool. Like, please tell me about this. Yeah, like in this picture here, where all those different uh, airships are there, like in the scaffolding, are they they're fighting over different spots and areas in there? Is that what's going on? Yeah, so you'll see that they're the there's the big blimps, the one by threes are on the large machines. Um, but if you look at the smaller yellow machines, you could not put a a large blimp on there. You'd have to use your one by two or one by one to place on there. And so what you're doing is you're placing on machines to use abilities, and you're placing adjacent to resource images to use their resources and collect them. Um, and you have a really cool player board, um, just like in all of our, our really neat games. We have a player board and all the scoring and stuff is going to be on the back of that player board. So it's really, really cool. Cool. Now, what about the timing of this? Let me bring up the website that we have uh, for Whistle Stop. When is this going to be coming out? So this is a plan for Gen Con release. That's our goal is to have it at uh, released at Gen Con. Obviously, if something happens at Gen Con or it doesn't happen, we'll put another release date up um, and kind of give you guys a more exact window. But right now, we're just shooting for that because obviously with all the unpredictability going on, um, yeah. we don't want to overcommit and then underdeliver. Right. Okay. Well, cool. And then you're here to talk about a third game that's come out a little bit later in the year, right? 
Yes. Oh my gosh. So we, this is one that I have been so excited to talk about. We couldn't talk about it before in Gamma. And it's one that I know you've gotten to play a couple of times, but it's called Maglev Metro. Um, and this is a TED design. And you know, I'm a huge fan of anything TED designs. And this is right up his alley. It's very, very unique. Um, and he worked on it like a mad scientist. That's my favorite thing about this game is he had the idea and this is the fastest I've seen a game go from idea to final prototype. So it's really, really cool. And it was fun to be a part of it because um, a lot of input from everybody, a lot of changes. Uh, I mean, we had Dale Yu. Um, he was also helping develop the game and he helped with Suburbia and stuff. So Now, yeah, I mean, Ted, Ted's games are amazing. Like my, my favorite game uh, in the Bezier catalog is Suburbia, especially the new version, the collector's edition. That game is just amazing and i tend to like ted's designs so um it's what are the main mechanisms of the game so um this one is kind of a pick up and deliver uh, route building game so it's it's kind of cool you're rebuilding the um, you're rebuilding the metro system of a of a city and you're rebuilding it with magnetic levitation rails and so that's where the name maglev metro obviously comes from um, and so as you're rebuilding it, you are trying to get your workers uh, different places where they desire to go. And so you're trying to deliver colored passengers to different colored stops. Um, but I'll tell you my favorite thing about the game is actually the tiles, which I have a couple of right here. And if you can see, they are just like beep, super transparent. Like you yeah. can see through them, which is cool because as you're placing them on the board, if I were to lay a route and let's say a green player was there and he wanted to lay a route, he would just... We go ahead and put it right over that. And so now that's what it's going to look like on the board as players are going different destinations. And then if we're playing with red and he also wants to go there, um, he can also go there. And all the tiles are designed so they won't overlap. And you can have three different routes on the map, which is really, really cool. Yeah, I, that was one of the things that blew my mind when I got, ch I got a chance to play an early prototype back at PAX last year packs unplugged in philadelphia and uh that was one of the things that was mind-blowing that like we all have these different tiles and we're seeing how this works and we lay them down and we're like oh and then like you stand up and you look at all the routes from all the different players and how they all cross but you can see everything it was like yeah, oh just... and the, that must have taken forever to come up with the different tiles and how they all work that way yeah well and that's you you'd expect it to take forever but like i said this was one ted was locked in his office just like working away at making prototypes we uh we have all kinds of neat stuff in house that we uh, we've started doing now. We have a laser cutter and a three D couple three D printers that we've started doing for prototype stuff. So it's easier and faster. But I could tell how much passion he had for this project. And so um, passion is something that when you when it's contagious. So we all got it in the office, and we really really enjoy this one. This is one that we've all had to bite our tongues because we just wanted to tell everyone about transparent tiles. Because um, I can't think of another game that uses them in quite as neat of a way. Like, I can't actually think of a game that uses them heavily at all. But um, this is just such a unique thing that it, the passion just was contagious. So we're all really, really excited about this one. Yeah, the one of the really interesting things about this game uh, that really hit me was not only is it pick up and deliver, uh, but it's also really, like you said, it's, it's a network building game, but it's also really an engine building game where you're like, you figure out what to do with those passengers and where on your board to place them. And depending on where you place them, you'll get different abilities. You'll be able to go further or be able to hold more passengers or be able to do this or do that. And it's like, it's basically you're building up your own engine depending on the types of passengers that you're picking up and such. And it's just, it, it, it was really cool how you could kind of like, it's, it's like mashing together two main mechanisms together, but it, it, it comes together really, really in a really cool way. Yeah, and I really, really like it because um, the first two maps that are going to come with the game, uh, the first side is going to be Manhattan, and then the other side of the board is actually going to have Berlin. So you'll be able to play different cities. Um, and what that also allows us to do down the road is be able to release different maps in the future and be able to put a lot of expansions and a lot of different things into this game. Um, so it continues, like Suburbia, to be a super relevant title, and like Castles, to be something that we want to stick on people's shelves and they never want to get rid of. Because, I mean, people who have castles and have suburbia, it's been on their shelves forever. Like, you don't want to get rid of it because it's a really solid game. Yeah. And so when is this one going to be releasing? So this is our plan for Gen... I mean, the plan for Essen release. Um, so we're going to be releasing this one at Essen this year. Of course, pending Essen happens. 
Uh, if not, we'll try to make it available in October. Okay. And it looks like the retail is uh, sixty nine ninety five. Looks like on your website. Yep, that's correct. And it is also available for pre order. Um, so another maybe another good reason to join the Wolfpack. Again, you get um, you obviously get the uh, pre order processing advantage for yourself by joining the Wolfpack. And I mean, five bucks. That's like a cup of coffee. And so that pre order processing. Tell us a little bit more about that. How that works. So um, we have a lot of procedures we do when products and things come in. Uh, and so we found a way to kind of cut through a little bit of that. Um, and we want to be able to give advantage to people who join the Wolfpack. Uh, and so one of our ideas was, well, we can, we can increase the processing on a couple of these games on our pre-orders um, to get them out sooner. Um, and then obviously go through and our rest of our inventory and do all the other orders after that. So even if you are in the Wolfpack and you pre-order one of the last days, yours will be processed um, kind of to the front of the line, like a fast pass at Disney, I guess. Okay, cool, cool, that's really cool. Yeah, so I'm really excited about this because apparently what I played was a pretty early prototype and I heard that he's really changed a decent amount of things uh, since then and I already, my brain was already loving the challenge before and I'm really looking forward to seeing what's changed and, and, and things like that since then. Yeah, and so aesthetically, it's changed a lot too. I'll tell you, one of the neat things is we've actually we have a, a new graphic designer on the team, um, and so she's joined our team and has really, really helped. She actually helped design the the cool logo for the uh, the Wolfpack symbol, um, but she's been working on the art and stuff and updating it, and it's looking really cool. Like every every new version, every new update that Ted comes out with, it's just like, wow, this is this is awesome. Um, I actually have it here. I, the reason I have the game here is I got to play with my wife, um, Whitney, who you've met. Um, we got to play Maglev, and she really, really enjoyed it. But it's out on the table here is why why uh, I was able to have all the bits and pieces and stuff. Uh, because she hadn't played it yet, and it was her first chance. We like to always have somebody go through the rules who's never played it and have them set it up and play. And she's like, ooh, I see the challenge of this game. Like, I see that I see all the things I could have done, and I want to play this again. <laughs> that's cool so do you have uh anything else before we go to sort of you know maybe I'll, i might ask you some more questions and then again if you're in the audience and you have a question for any of the games that we've talked about or the wolf pack or anything about bezier games go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll be able to ask matt these questions uh but matt do you have anything else about these games or the wolf pack you want to talk about before we uh just kind of chat it up a little bit hmm. um no, I mean, like I said, these this year I was I was super sad about conventions not happening, being a trade show manager, because I knew I was going to have some of the coolest stuff at the trade shows. Like these games are very, very eye catching. They look great on a table, um, which is kind of kind of awesome as a trade show manager. You know, having things that people stop and they're like, "What is that? I want to check that out more." Um, so just check them out. There's uh, we'll be releasing more videos. There's some video of Gam from Gamma coming out that has some content from them. Uh, but we're releasing various content. Uh, so just keep your eyes out on our stuff because the more that comes out, I think the more you'll be tempted to buy. Cool. All right. So uh, if you have any questions for Matt, go ahead and put them in the chat. We're just going to get ready to, uh, I'm going to go look at the chat and see what's on there. And we'll get ready to ask Matt some questions. In the meantime, I'll give you this for 30 seconds. Check this out. Did you miss the Game Topper 2.0 Kickstarter? Have no fear. It's not too late to get in on the ultimate gaming accessory. Convert your table into a high quality gaming table with a fully portable game topper system and take advantage of some of the best 3mm premium gaming mats in the industry. New styles, new sizes, and new accessories can be yours. Upgrade every game you play by late backing now at GameToppersLLC.com. All right, Matt. So we have a question from Sharon, and she wants to know, is the Wolfpack, is it limited? Does it kind of cap out at a certain amount of people? Uh, and can they join it later on and kind of you know, get the benefits of that? Yes, yes. Yeah. So um, there's not a limited number of members right now. Um, we are going to continue to open it up and uh, should be available. Uh, so it should be something that you can join whenever. So uh, even if you pre-ordered Silver Coin and you choose to join the Wolfpack, we can retroactively um, put you into the Wolfpack so your pre-order will ship sooner. Okay. 
And we have another question. What is the average uh, play time for, let's see, the average play time for Maglev Metro? Uh, so the first game, I'll tell you, I always, the game, I think, averages around like 45, 50 minutes. But your first game is going to take a little longer just because there's a couple things to figure out and look at. Um, so I'd say your first game, expect maybe an hour 15 but I wouldn't expect that for any other game that you ever play. It's just there's a couple of things that you have to figure out the first time through. Um, and then it'll take you for third, 45 minutes to play. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a question from a Whitney, and I'm, I'm, I think I know who this is. And, and she's asking, when can you bring home a real copy home? <laughs> oh, yeah. So the real copies won't be coming until October. And uh, she's going to have to be patient. I don't know who that is, but she's going to have to be patient. Well, you know, we'll, we'll see yeah, what happens. I, I, I mean, you, you've been play playing this a lot. Way. You've been playing this a lot lately, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, yeah. She's She's gotten a chance to play. Uh, yes. And so uh, more people are asking for the link for the Wolf Pack. And um, I will go back after this video. So if you're watching this later on, I'll make sure that that link is in there. Uh, but if you just go to BeziersGames.com, uh, it, it, it's literally right the first thing you see right now. Mm-hmm. So Matt, um, with all this uh, un, you know, unknowing of what's going to be happening, um, your job used to be to really drive around and do different things for the conventions and manage the trade shows and such. And with all this uncertainty, how much like harder has it made you do your job? And you know, it, for someone that's doing such a big thing like that. So uh, for my for my back and legs, it's been a lot easier. Have not have to load and unload the truck. But um, as far as planning and things, like I said, I'll, most of my work goes into this, the off-season planning all the shows, and then they start happening. But this year it was the opposite. They kicked off, and then it was like, oh, you kind of have to unbook hotels. You have to undo these things. Um, but the neat thing is Ted and Tony have been really, really supportive in helping me figure out how can I still – because really my job at the end of the day is to connect with connect with our fans, go out to these shows and connect with people, answer questions, um, just do be the industry guy, be out there for us. And so I found a lot of unique ways for, uh, via making videos, via obviously doing cool interviews of my favorite guy, Dan, uh, but different things to keep myself relevant in the industry and to keep myself uh, connected with our fan base. Cool. Well, Matt, look, I want to thank you so much for being here. Um, if, uh, if anyone has any other questions later, you can. what's the best way to, 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 to get a hold of Bezier and ask you any questions uh, about what might be coming up? So uh, you can email me at events at beziergames.com. Um, that's my, that's my like, broad mailbox, events at beziergames.com. So you can hit me there, um, or you can go to our website and submit questions. Um, and if you don't, you can uh, post a comment to Dan. He has my cell phone number and he can text me. So, <laughs> Well, cool. Well, Matt, look, I want to thank you so much for being on tonight. I'm glad we got a chance to show uh, everyone what's coming out and all the, you know, Whistle Mountain and Maglev that nobody had even really heard of yet. You know, Silver Coin is, has, has been on probably maybe some people's radars because we've been putting out some content for that. But uh, hopefully they've been able to learn even more about that today and then also Maglev Metro. I can't wait to play some of these new ones. I mean, Whistle Stop was one of my favorite games that year that came out. Uh, it's, it's just the same designer, even though it's a very different game. I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, and, of course, with uh, Maglev Metro, anything Ted does, I mean, I want to play more and more. And especially since I got a chance to play it, I can't wait to see what it's turned into. So that, it sounds really yeah. cool. So uh, thank you so much for joining. And, again, if, if, if anyone has questions, let them know. And then, I guess, the last thing here is the uh, wolf packing. And people are asking about that. At the top there, you'll see beziergames.com, B-E-Z-I-E-R games.com. And that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Keep subscribed to my channel. Let me know comments of what else you'd like to see streamed. Because uh, I'm pretty much streaming every week, at least once a week. And I'm trying to make sure that, uh, you know, we play some games. We'll have some cool guests on and stuff like that. Let me know what else or who else you'd like to see. This has been the Game Boy Geek. Breaking down barriers, growing relationships. Uh, and hey, have a great night. Everyone stay safe. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>